Hey, I'm Sean Taylor, and this is Nate Silver. Nate Silver is one of those rare people who is both popular and smart. So, like, you know, people pay attention to him, and he makes really good predictions. And in the 2012 presidential election, he made really good predictions. But he wasn't the only one making predictions. This slide's kind of like a punchline in itself. Carl Rove made predictions. I'm sure he'd love to have this one back, you know. And, you know, let's not get so down on Carl. We all know. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> It's, it's bad, it looks kind of bad, but you know, I don't want to Niels bore you here, but pred <laughs> prediction is <laughs> prediction's pretty difficult, especially about the future. Everyone knows that prediction's hard, and yet we all do it. Everyone in this room has made a prediction I'm sure you'd love to have back. And when you put people on the internet, they'll just make predictions about anything that they want on Twitter, on all kinds of websites. If you ask them for any kind of prediction, they'll basically give it to you. They'll predict earthquakes. Basically, people just can't stop making predictions. And why do they do it? I really think it's about demand. I think people just really like paying attention to predictions. This is highly scientific research here. Um, people just want to know what's going to happen in the future. They want to know what's going to happen on their favorite television shows, with the weather, with the interest rates. This is important to them. And who are they getting their information from? These dummies. <laughs> Oh, we, we just, we pay attention to these people who are popular, and they're the ones making the predictions that we're consuming, but, you know, maybe they're not so good at predicting the future. We, we, do, we really don't know, because no one's keeping score. Yeah. We need to start keeping score for these guys. Like, you know, they're not accountable for their predictions, so they can make bad ones and good ones, and, you know, they'll talk about the good ones, but not talk about the bad ones. So I had this idea a couple years ago. I was like, what if we made everyone bet? Let's just make these guys bet each other, you know? And then... We'll keep score by how much money they win or lose. That'll be good, okay. So now we have a scoring mechanism and we know who's good at prediction or not as long as they bet. Betting's got three other great properties. Number one, if you have to bet, you have something that you could lose. And so having some stakes in it makes you think a little bit harder about whether you're gonna make a prediction or not. So you better be confident about what you're predicting if you're gonna bet. Number two is that if you're going to make a bet, it needs to be precisely stated. You're going to make a bet with another person. They've got to agree to it. And so if it's not really precisely stated, like I would never make a bet with Punxsutawney Phil because who the hell knows what six weeks of winter means. So then they, people make their bets more precise. Number three, idiots stop betting when they learn that they're bad at betting. <laughs> they lose lots of bets, and then, they, then you're not hearing predictions from idiots anymore. Betting is not a new idea, and betting online and betting online for money, they're not new ideas. I'm not claiming to like invent the bet here. In trades existed for a long time, although it doesn't exist anymore. But we wouldn't have been able to identify Nate Silver from his trading activity on Intrade because we didn't know who's trading on Intrade. We don't have their identity. We don't have identity for anybody who does anything on Intrade. So people are making bets. Nate Silver could have made a bundle of money, but we wouldn't have known that it was him. There's another problem with Intrade, and that is Mo money, mo problems. <laughs> Intrade doesn't exist anymore because it's real money and it's illegal. But there's another problem with money. And money is something that discludes people from accessing the prediction market. So let's say there are people who are just as good as Nate Silver, but they don't have the money to lose. They can't make their predictions. So my claim here is maybe we should just start using reputation as currency. Um, you know, money is good for betting, but also people, everyone in the room has reputation to gain and reputation to lose. And so this is a perfectly valid form of something to bet. And when we get people betting, everybody betting, we can accommodate a really long tail of bets that, you know, having people bet about all kinds of things, not just presidential elections, but all the way down the long tail to things that are specific to our professions, our locations, our demographics. All right? So just to recap, I'm talking about a centralized reputation system with everyone bets, we keep score, a reputation-based currency, and we identify all the participants, and then we can get the Nate Silvers of not only U.S. politics, but even things like the Westminster Dog Show. So now we can stop paying attention to the people who are really lucky and got popular but are unskillful at predictions and move down to paying attention to the people in quadrant four who are skillful at prediction but unlucky enough to get our attention. But wait, there's more. When everyone starts putting their predictions in one place, we can create an information resource that is to the future what Wikipedia is to the past. It is an aggregated information resource crowdsourced, and we know, we'll know more about the future than we ever have before. If you'd like to subscribe to my newsletter, <laughs> I have an early prototype of this. You can check it out, and this is, this is a side project. Lots of interesting challenges and problems, and I'd love your advice and feedback. Let me know. Thank <laughs> you.